early case from Entre Rios province in Argentina is memorable due to the bizarre exchange that occurred between the witness and the being. The case was investigated by Argentinian researcher Manuel Orego Fratos from details provided by the great-great-nephew of the main witness, an odontologist currently living in Buenos Aires. In early 2020, Fratos forwarded his notes to Albert Rosales for inclusion in his humanoid journals. A German man, Fratos did not provide a name, migrated to Argentina soon after World War I and purchased several hectares of land in the Antros Rios province. Over time he became a somewhat prosperous rancher. His reputation in the community was of a good, hard-working man, thus his account was not so easy to dismiss by locals or family members, especially since there were at least three other witnesses to back it up. It was the afternoon of April 18, 1924. The main witness, the ranch owner, his father and two ranch hands were attempting to track down a mother cow. On certain occasions after a cow would give birth to a calf, it would reject it and it would die. That afternoon a similar situation was playing out. A mother cow had wandered into the woods in order to abandon her offspring, and the ranch owner was desperate to save the newborn's life. He quickly gathered his father, a pair of ranch hands, and some dogs to search the nearby woods for the cow. It just so happened that it was Holy Friday that day, and the ranch hands were reluctant to join in the search, but eventually they agreed. Right away the witness noticed that the dogs seemed to be somewhat agitated. Something was definitely bothering them. The further they ventured into the forest, the more nervous the animals became. The dogs eventually stopped at a patch of forest obscured by thick bushes. They barked frantically at something in those bushes. The witness and the others began to make a movement in the foliage and assumed that it was the cow that they were looking for. The dogs were eventually released and they circled around the bushes, barking wildly. As the witness and the others approached, they began to make out that it was not a cow lurking in the bushes, but rather something straight out of a nightmare. After glimpsing it up close, one of the ranch hands reportedly screamed and made the sign of the cross on his forehead. The others were just as stunned and frightened by what they were seeing. Crouched down, hidden behind the foliage, was a strange looking woman. She was humanoid, but definitely not human. She was completely naked and her arms were extended as if pleading. Her skin was extremely wrinkled and very pale. The witness likened it to quote, a raisin. Her hair was silver color and her eyes were completely black. No whites at all were visible. They estimated that she was a little under five feet tall. As they stood staring at her, the strange woman began howling and muttering unintelligible things as if attempting to communicate while the dogs kept barking uncontrollably. At this point, the two ranch hands, both Catholic, assumed that they were in the presence of a demon, and they began to pray out loud. They pointed their rifles at her as they did so. Suddenly, the woman spoke in a very gruff voice, speaking directly to the ranch owner. Please take the dogs away and let me leave. I am not of this world. The witness, although frightened, asked, what were you looking for? The woman replied back, I am only investigating and accidentally became lost in this dimension. If you let me leave, I will reward you as soon as you return to your home. Immediately after, the ranch owner ordered the ranch hands to lower their rifles, which they did, albeit reluctantly. With that, the woman said thank you. The men then attempted to calm the dogs, and as they did so, they suddenly saw a powerful glow envelop the mysterious woman. She then completely vanished. The light had been so intense that the men were temporarily blinded. After regaining their vision, they immediately returned to the ranch. To their surprise, as they ventured near the entrance to the ranch, they found the missing cow tied to a post, and next to it were two albino calves, with their hair, quote, white as milk. No one knew where these calves had come from, or how the cow ended up tied up to a post at the entrance to the ranch, though the ranch owner suspected, not surprisingly, 
that it was connected to the woman they had just encountered. This account is very interesting in that it involves an apparent interaction between humans and a being from another dimension, and a reciprocating act of kindness, the type of which doesn't happen very often in these types of reports, at least not the ones I tend to talk about. It's curious that the being returned not only the cow that they were looking for, but two additional albino ones, seemingly as a gift for letting her live. At no point in the account did they indicate to her that they were looking for a cow, so it certainly seems that she had read their minds without them realizing it. Also, it appeared given the nature of her exit, vanishing in plain sight, that she could have left the area without having to plead for her life, and that it was done by her in order to gauge their reactions, or possibly interact with people from another dimension, unless, of course, something was impeding her ability to leave, and she was merely holding them off until she was able to make her exit, similar to how Scotty would beam up Captain Kirk just in the nick of time. The central witness claimed that the being indicated that she was from a different dimension and that she had gotten lost, which differs from similar accounts from that time period in which beings claimed to have come from the stars, more specifically Mars. It's a curious detail. If the story is true and these events happened as described, it makes you wonder why the rancher would describe her as coming from a different dimension as opposed to from Mars, or some other such place as would be expected. While I could be wrong, the idea that ranchers would be hip to the idea of dimension hopping entities back in 1924 just seems unlikely. As reported in the August 28, 1923 edition of the Mid-Sussex Times, a woman claims to have encountered a very strange entity while seeking shelter from the rain. The event happened in 1907 somewhere in Suffolk, England. Kay Cog of ufonewspaper.blogspot.com was able to locate a copy of the printing, but for some reason the actual location of the incident had been, quote, whited out in the available copy. It is unclear why somebody would want to censor the location, but that is indeed what happened. According to the witness, it was a warm but rainy night in May 1907. The witness had missed the train and was walking the four miles into town. At around 10 o'clock that night, while crossing a field, the rain became too much, and so, after checking around to see that no tramps were in the vicinity, decided to seek shelter under a small tree with a noticeably thick trunk. I will quote the witness with regards to what happened next. As the rain did not appear to be leaving off, I stepped out to continue my journey. The rain was, however, so heavy that I turned back to the tree which I had left only a few seconds before. Never shall I forget the terror which seized me on seeing in front of me, watching my movements with a malignant and horrible expression, a something I can only describe as a thing. Black and gnarled as a tree trunk, yet human in shape, it stood confronting me, with eyes blazing at me with curious, baneful phosphorescent glow. It glided towards me, and as it stretched out its hands, I uttered a wild shriek of agonized terror. The thing thereupon vanished as suddenly as it had appeared. Later, upon telling some friends the witness was informed that the field was known for being haunted and that nobody dared cross it after dusk. Typically misfortune fell on any person or cattle who wandered onto that land. This included some strange deaths. Albert Rosales noted the similarity between this case and another that occurred in British Columbia, Canada in 1970. Jim Butler, a University of Alberta biologist, had received the report from a student which was later included in Jerome Clark's book Hidden Realms, Lost Civilizations and Beings from Other Worlds. August 1970, afternoon. A man and a woman had gone hiking in the woods near Seashelt, a small village in British Columbia. 
After hiking around, they ended up stumbling upon a down log in the middle of a small clearing. They decided that it would be the perfect spot to stop and rest. As they sat silently taking in the warm breeze, they noticed on their right a small, thin, muscular man, barely more than three feet tall, with dark, leathery skin, approaching them from out of the forest. The male witness noted that the man's limbs looked strange, quote, like tree roots. As the bizarre-looking entity stood in front of them, so close that they could have touched him if they dared, the couple felt an intense emotion come over them that they sensed was emanating from this figure. He also gave off a feeling of menace, enhanced when he hit the ground with his right foot, bent over, and waved a fist at them. Then it was gone, apparently rushing away back into the cover of the forest, utilizing an unnatural speed. While recounting the experience to Butler, the male witness noted that the entity had appeared both naked and clothed at the same time. As well, he could recall him being both solid and ghost-like. Though the entire experience had lasted only about five seconds, the witness insisted he could still recall decades later, every detail of the being's face. <laughs>